And hello everybody and welcome to this next awesome PDC Dart Simulator video. In this video we are actually going to run a fictitious Women's Premier League. So I'm going to take the same format as the men have in PDC. We're going to play nine week round robin, best of 12 legs, two points for a win, one point for a loss. And the top eight will move on to the second phase, and the top four will move on to the final night after uh, 15 weeks. So we're going to simulate the first nine weeks here in this video, and then we will conclude the tournament at another date. So here are the ten I chose. I chose Lisa Ashton, Mikuru Suzuki, Lorraine Winstanley, Dita Hedman, Anastasia Dodromoslova, Eileen de Graaf, Fallon Sherrick, Sharon Prinz, Corrine Hammond, Trina Gulliver. And I think it was fairly clear which 10 to choose. I mean, you could have maybe argued for a couple others, but I don't think anybody would have too much of an objection with the 10 I chose. This is my prediction of the table. Take it for what it is. Um, Lisa Ashton, I think, is the best player. Makuru Suzuki, the world champion, also excellent. I really like Lorraine Win Stanley and Dita Hedman as well. I think those are at least the four I would pick. However, to be fair, there's a lot of good players up there. And really, there's any one of the ten could do really well, and anyone could do poorly. So... I think there'll be a lot of parity. I don't think anybody's going to run away with the league. I think Lisa and Mikuru will, will have the most points, but I think 3 through 10 really could go anywhere. But there's my prediction. So we will see if I'm close, if I'm way off, or if uh, it's kind of mixed up. So we will see. So with that said, let's get out to week one. And we're going to start off with Fallon Sherrick and Eileen de Graaf, two very respectable players. I like that fifth matchup of the night. We got a World uh, Championship Finals rematch. All right, so so let's get this started. Hopefully, we get some. Badass averages. Well, that isn't, but that's okay. I'm sure they'll warm up. <laughs> and just so anybody knows, the way the women are programmed, I have them programmed just like they play in real life. I do not adjust it to make them score more like the men. Like Lisa Ashton, she's not going to go out there averaging 100. She's going to go out there averaging about 80 to 85 because that's what she does in real life. Now, this was a pretty poor game from Fallon Sherrick by her standards. She's certainly capable of a lot more than that. Aline, that's maybe an average game, maybe a little below average for her, but certainly not something she'll be telling her kids about someday, that she averaged 76 in the Premier League. So I typically say to adjust to the men, take the women's average and add about 18 to it give or take, around there, and you get a pretty good idea. So this would be like, if you're watching the men play and one average 94 and the average, other average 89, it would not be the greatest of standards, but it's not embarrassing either. So that's about where I would put it, just from my observations and my uh, calculations and studies and whatever. So again, that's my opinion. Take it for what it is. All right, up next we have Lisa Ashton against Kareen Hammond. Now, if there's going to be a huge average, I think it'll come from Lisa, because I think she's got the most scoring power. So we'll, we'll take a look. Well... Not her best effort, but she did win, so I'm sure she'll take it. All right, Dita Hedman, Trina Gulliver. Trina Gulliver. 
Katrina, of course, the many-time world champion. Looking for a Premier League title, and there we go. Dita wins 7-4. to four. Good start to her Premier League. Up next, a fan favorite, Anastasia Dobromislova against Sharon Prinz. Anastasia is another one that's capable of having a really huge game, but I think she's also pretty volatile. So. Well, that was a nice win, 7-1, 76 average. That's the best we've seen so far. And now McCrew, the miracle against Lorraine Winstanley, a... Uh, World Championship Finals rematch. So this will be... Oh, whoops. That's a mistake. Um, so we'll just run one leg and then discard this since I put the wrong number in. Alright, so just ignore that. That was only one leg anyway, so the stats are meaningless. I just typoed on the code. She's 2002, not 1002. Okay, 12 legs, and off we go. And Miracle Mikuru and Lorraine Win Stanley have tied. And look at those averages. Now there's some, there's some high standard right there. That that's a very solid game. Five 180s. Wow, that's pretty amazing. And it looks like uh, she had to win the last one to draw. So well, I think they'll both be happy with a point there. Those are certainly two players you will expect to see near the top of the table, I would think. I think most people would agree with that. So let's take a look at the league table. After one week, there you go. We got Anastasia at the top with her 7-1 win. And, you know, you just kind of work your way down. We have four wins and two draws, so those are the six with points. The other four, they have some work to do, but they got eight more weeks to do it, so let's move on to week two. Next, we have Kareen Hammond, Eileen de Graaf, the Aussie against the Dutch. Okay, well, Kareen did not uh, improve on her average from last time. Eileen did. She's up to the average up to 77. That's pretty solid. I'm sure she'll be satisfied with that. Mikuru and Fallon. Another couple of serious contenders who have won quite a bit over the past year. Well, let's get that number in right. There we go. And Makuru wins, despite the lower average. Looks like she had some double trouble, but she got over the line. For a 7-5 win, I'm sure she's happy with that. Um, next we have Lisa Ashton against Trina Gulliver. I would certainly... I, I, I think Lisa and Makuru are going to... They, th those two could run away with it. They are just playing so well right now. Anyway, let's get Trina in there. I'm sure Lisa will lose after I compliment her like that. We'll see. No, she won 7-5 to five with a nice 79 average. It's about her... I, mean, she, I think she averages in the low 80s as her standard. That's about a slightly under average game for her. Not bad, though. All right, Dita Hedman, Sharon Prinz. And Dita wins 7 to 4. Nice finishing. 7 out of 15. Two ton pluses, including a 156. I think that's the biggest checkout we've seen. Unless I missed one. But I'm pretty sure that she has the biggest checkout. You can comment if I'm an idiot and I missed a bigger one. Okay. 
Anastasia against Lorraine. That was a semifinals matchup, which Lorraine won, come from behind. And Anastasia wins this time, 7-5. to five. Serious double trouble for her, missed 28 at double. Wow, but she still managed to survive. She must have been scoring quite well. All right, and there we have it. 7-5 to five to the Russian. So let's take a look at the league table after two weeks. Anastasia is in first, based on leg difference. Eileen DeGraff is second. She also has two wins. Lisa Ashton, Dita Hedman also have two wins apiece. Mikuru Suzuki has a win and a draw. Lorraine wins Stanley a draw. The other four, well, they haven't quite gotten it going yet, but uh, they got time. Lots of time. This competition is far from over. Seven more weeks of darts. Moving on to week three. Trina Gulliver, Eileen DeGraff. And well, look at that, seven to one. Okay, she is upping her standard, seventy-nine and a half. I think that's one she, seven a seven-one win there with a seventy-nine average. She's going to be happy with that. All right, next we've got Corrine Hammond Fallon Sherrick. Someone will get on the board here, and it will be. It will be Fallon, despite well, oh, I don't think that get, I don't think that match would have been much fun to watch. <laughs> that is a lot of missed doubles. Okay, Lisa Ashton, Sharon Prins. Lisa, oh, look at that, 87-97 and a 7-1 win. Now, that is what I was talking about when I said, if someone's going to just blow up the scoreboard, it's going to be Lisa Ashton. We, we all know what she's capable of, and she showed it again. So, yeah, that would be the equivalent of someone in PDC averaging, like, in the mid-hundreds, like 105, 106, somewhere in there. Maybe, maybe even a little higher when you factor in. She was basically unchallenged, seven to one. She's essentially playing against herself. So yeah, that would be, that would that would be a, around a 105 to 108 average on the PDC. Her standard on that. So just putting that in perspective of what a strong performance that is, and how hard that would be for any of her competitors to match or even be competitive with. So. Moving on, a really good matchup here. Dita Hedman, Lorraine wins Stanley. And the winner is Lorraine wins Stanley, 7-2. She also had a nice game, 79 average. 7-2 win against a strong opponent. I'm sure she's very thrilled with that. Next, McCrew and Anastasia. And the winner is, wow, look at those averages. Now, that's some strong darts. 130 out, 7 out of 12, and an 86.5 average for McCrew. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, to put that in perspective, we just saw Lee's average 87 and change and just wiped out uh, Sharon Prince, who didn't have her best game. But you look at this, Anastasia averaged 81, which is actually quite nice. And the 86 just just destroyed her. So yeah, those mid-80s averages are going to be really hard to beat. And if they can continue that standard, which there's no reason they can't, then that's going to be pretty powerful. So yeah, this would be like this would be like if Anastasia played on PDC, threw a hundred, and just got crushed. Is what this looks like to me. So. Well done for the Miracle Mikuru Suzuki, as she just continues to dominate everybody. Moving on to the table. Eileen DeGraff, three wins, along with Lisa Ashton. Mikuru at five, Anastasia and Dita at four. 
Lorraine Fallon, three and two. Corrine Hammond, Trina Goval, Sharon Prenz. Still trying to get out of first gear. But I assure you that they'll get some points at some point. <laughs> On to week four. We got Sharon Prenz against Eileen de Graaf. Top versus bottom, I think. Close, close enough. And the winner is Eileen de Graaf. Despite going 7 for 35 on her doubles. She'll need to clean that up if she's going to continue to uh, stay at the top of the table. But two points is two points. All right, Trina Gulliver, Fallon Sherrick. Fallon with the 7-4 win. My, my uh, stats lined up perfectly. Look how beautiful that looks. That's just dumb luck. It won't happen again. <laughs> All right, so let's put that one in the books, four to seven, Fallon with the win, Mikuru Suzuki, Kareen Hammond. And the winner is Mikuru Suzuki. Only a 68 average though, so easily her worst game so far. Kareen couldn't get much going either. Another one of those matches you probably wouldn't have enjoyed much if you were watching at home, but we fast-forwarded them, so that's okay. Look, my stats lined up perfectly again. I said it wouldn't happen again, it happened on the next match. Who knew? All right, game of the day, probably Lisa Ashton, Lorraine, Win Stanley. Two of my favorite players, so let's see how they do. Oops, that's not right. Um, I'll just run a one-leg simulation of that. One. All right, so we'll just kick this result out since that's a mistake. Yeah, if I put in the wrong number, there's no way to correct it, unfortunately. If I make a typo or something. Okay, now we have the right two in the game, and the winner is... Lisa Ashton, 7-3. to three. And a 136, that's still pretty nice. Dita Hedman, Anastasia Dobromislova, another very good game. This should be very competitive, and I'm expecting and hoping for a high standard. We didn't really get one in the last match, so maybe this one will make up for it. Uh, not so much. Not a bad standard, though. Anastasia wins 7-4. to four. Mediocre game from both. But two points for the Russian. All right, let's look at the league table after four weeks. Lisa Ashton has now overtaken Eileen for first on leg difference, but they are both 4-0 and have a perfect eight points. Makuru Suzuki has only dropped one point. She's in third. Anastasia Dobromislova, three wins and a loss. She has six. We have uh, Fallon Sherrick, Dita Hedman at four. Lorraine Winstanley, three. And our other three contenders, well, they're still working on it. Week five, Lorraine wins Stanley, Eileen de Graaf. They both have some points, so let's see how they do. And Eileen continues to just plug away. 119 checkout. What the hell did she leave 119 for? Uh, Oh, well. She took it out. That's all that matters. And she gets the win. I'm sure she'll be quite happy with that. She will... Well, she might... Oh, she might stay at the... T she might uh, go back to the top. Lisa has a tough match against Anastasia, so anything could happen there. All right. Sharon Prince, Fallon Sherrick. And the winner is... Fallon Sherrick. Sharon Prince... Still struggling. Kareen Hammond, Treeman, Gulliver. Somebody will get on the board in this match. I guarantee it. Who will it be? Will it be the Aussie or will it be the, I believe, 10-time world champion? 
Could be both. They could draw. No, it's Trina Gulliver. She has a nice game. Oh, look at that. She took out Big Fish. That's awesome. Trina Gulliver took out Big Fish in the Premier League. Wow. I wish I could have seen that. That would have been awesome. I mean, Big Fish is always awesome, but to see a legend like that take it out, that would be sweet. Anyway, next match. Lisa Ashton, Anastasia Dabramaslova. This should be a great game. Let's watch. Yeah, well. Lisa looks like she handled her pretty well. Ugh, 3 for 23 on the doubles. That killed her. She's a great scorer, but unfortunately she does occasionally have some double trouble. And she did today. So 7-3 to Lisa Ashton. McCrew Suzuki. This should be a good matchup as well. Kuru Suzuki, Dita Hedman, and the winner is Mikuru Suzuki with an 85-27. She is just on fire. That is going to be tough to handle. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the league table after five weeks. Lisa Ashton, Eileen DeGraff continuing to just plug away 5-0 and for each of them. Makuru Suzuki had a draw in week one, but she's won her last four. She's sitting at nine. Fallon Sherrick, Anastasia Dubromislova tied for fourth. And Dita Hedman, Lorraine Winstanley, Trina Gulliver are all on the board. Six to eighth, Kareen Hammond, Sharon Prince. They need to get something going quickly. Or Judgment Night, no... Might not be a very interesting night. All right, on to week six. Now, this should be a good game. Anastasia and Eileen. We saw this at the World Championships as well. Two players I really like, so let's see how they go. And the winner is... And the winner is nobody. It's a draw. Now, that seems fair, since they are both pretty good players. And they're both playing at a good standard at the moment. So it seems only fitting that they each grab a point. First point anybody's gotten off of the Dutch. All right, Loreen Winstanley, Fallon Sherrick. Two very nice English players. And Lorraine wins Stanley, 81-88 average and a 7-3 win, 4-1-80, 7 for 14. That's a very solid all-around game. If she keeps playing like that, she will not be dropping many points the rest of the way. Hell, she won't be dropping many legs the rest of the way if she keeps that up. So, yeah, she, is, she found her groove today. Okay, Sharon Prince, Kareen Hammond. Somebody will get on the board in this one. I guarantee it. Who will it be? And the winner is Kareen Hammond with a 7-1 um, win. And now we have Mikuru Suzuki, Trina Gulliver. Mikuru has been absolutely on fire. Can she keep it up? Well, not exactly. She dropped a point and didn't play great. Six for 33 on doubles. Trina only averaged 70, so neither one of them really lit the world on fire. 6-6 six, six draw. And we move on to Lisa Ashton, Dita Hedman. Probably the most intriguing matchup of the day. Though the first one was awfully nice as well. well the second one was good too. We had a lot of potentially interesting matchups today. All right, so Lisa Ashton and Dita Hedman. And the winner is Lisa Ashton with an 85-72, just pounding away at that scoring. That's a very strong game. If she keeps that up, just like I said about uh, Lorraine Win stanley if they continue to play at that standard, they're not going to lose many legs the rest of the way, let alone matches. Look at, and you look at Dita Hedman. She played well except for the doubles, and she could only find three legs. Lisa was just that good. All right, so six weeks in the books. 
three more weeks to go. Let's take a look at the league table. Lisa Ashton has now pulled ahead by a point. Eileen de Graaf still in second. Very solid score of 11. Mikuru Suzuki in third with 10. Anastasia Dubromoslova, 7. Fallon Sherrick, Lorraine Wynn Stanley, Dita Hedman, Trina Gulliver. All would qualify if it ends today. Kareen Hammond with her win now only one point out of eighth place to avoid elimination. Sharon Prince still not on the board, but also not eliminated. She could get up to six points, and that will be plenty if she starts winning. So nobody's out of it just yet. We still have a lot of darts to go. Three more weeks of awesome, awesome play. All right, so here we go. Week seven, Dita Hedman, Eileen de Graaf. This should be a good one. Oh, and look, on the last one, my, uh, my score is lined up again. Amazing. Well, that's pretty good, too, averaging over 80. 78 from Dita, that's pretty solid, too. Both played well. Five for seven doubles for Dita. Good standard here, very good standard. But uh, no points for Dita. And Eileen just continues to uh, to win. <laughs> she just keeps keeps getting points. She can't be stopped. Another good matchup: Anastasia Dobromislova, Fallon Sherrick. And it's a draw. I guess that's kind of fitting. They're pretty evenly matched players. Put that one in. Lorraine Wynn Stanley, Kareen Hammond. Both played the best they'd played of the tournament last week. Let's see how they do this week. It's another draw. Wow. Kareen averaged 77 7, despite going 6 for 31 on the doubles. My gosh, if she could have just finished. She could have had a big game. Lorraine apparently missed a match dart. Well, that's unfortunate for her. 6-6, six, six, though. She'll take the point, I'm sure. It's certainly better than a loss. All right, Shara Prince, Trina, and Gulliver. And we have another draw. They each will get a point. Sharon Prince is now on the board. Good for her to get a point. And now, the matchup everybody's been waiting for, Makuru Suzuki, Lisa Ashton. We made them wait all night for it. Hopefully we get some rockin' darts. Here we go. This could be a finals preview very easily. We will see. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> wow! Look at Makuru Suzuki! 91.49 average. Wow. I'd say where did that come from, but I watched her do that at the World Championships. But I'm going to say it anyway. Where did that come from? <laughs> Beating Lisa Ashton 7 to nothing. Holy crap. I don't think there's too many PDCers that could beat her 7 to nothing. Now that is some badass play right there. That is some very badass darts. Our first whitewash of the uh of the the tournament holy crap i mean this would be like averaging 111 on the premier league it's like this the, that, that that's amazing right right there that that is wow <laughs> i think the fans that came to see that were not disappointed <laughs> all right on to the league table Well, Eileen takes back the top spot after Lisa Ashton's loss. Uh, it says Lisa's in second, but that's not right. She's actually in third. Um, McCrew will be in second on the leg difference. I don't know why the chart's doing that, but whatever. Um, Anastasia alone in fourth. 
Fallon Sherrick, Lorraine Wynn Stanley, Dita Hedman, Trina Gulliver are all safe for now. Kareen Hammond is up to three points, only one behind. So she definitely has a lot of avenues to get in. Sharon Prince, she's almost going to have to win her last two to have much of a chance. Her hopes are pretty dim, but she did get one point, so she's still alive, but barely. All right, on to week eight. We got some more awesome darts. Lisa Ashton, Eileen DeGraff. Number two versus number three. No, number one versus number three, actually. I'm doing this live, so I might make mistakes with my stats. Oh, my stats lined up on the last match, too. Another miracle. And the winner is... Lisa Ashton. Well, she put up a nice game. Eileen, well, not her best. So, Lisa, since this was such a big match, I'll show us a running count. Lisa Ashton is now, for the moment, in first place, but uh, McCrew Suzuki, with a win later, can take first back. Eileen will either be in second or third, depending on the result of the last match of the day. Back to the stage, we have Dita Hedman, Fallon, Sherrick. And the winner is Fallon Sherrick with an 80 average. These ladies are definitely picking up. We're seeing a lot more 80 plus averages. We've seen a 90 plus average. Even losing averages have been in the mid 70s now. So they are definitely raising the standard, which is great. We all want to see that. Anastasia Dobromislova. Corrine Hammond. Oh, Kareen Hammond with a nice win there. Oh, Anastasia, 3 for 31. What was that all about? Ah, oh, you're better than that, Anastasia. You are better than that. That is not going to get you a Premier League title. All right, Lorraine wins Stanley, Trina Gulliver. Two players who could really use some points. Where will they go? They will be split. Six to six. Looks like both had some trouble finishing, but they each get a point. That should keep them out of trouble for now. And last but not least, certainly not least, Makuru Suzuki, Sharon Prince. Makuru will take over first if she wins. Sharon Prince needs to win, or she's more or less eliminated. It's a draw! Wow! That's a big point for Sharon Prince, and a big misstep for Mikuru Suzuki. Dropping a point to the person at the bottom of the table, but it is what it is. Alright, so let's take a look at the table, entering Judgment Night. Lisa Ashton will be on back on top with her 14 points. Eileen DeGraff is actually third. I don't know why it's not lining this up properly, but it doesn't really matter. Makuru Suzuki is actually second. They both have 13. Fallon Sherrick is fourth with nine. Anastasia Dobromislova is safe. Lorraine Wynn Stanley is safe. Uh, Kareen Hammond is basically safe. I mean, it would be quite weird for her to not get in. she basically have to lose 7 nothing or something just bizarre. And Well, I guess there's a lot of permutations, but it would definitely be weird if she were to lose. Trina Gulliver is safe for now, but she could easily be caught. Dita Hedman, shockingly, in the ninth place. I did not expect that. I don't know where that's coming from, but that's not the performance I was expecting to see from her at all. I actually had her picked fourth, but she can still survive. She is not out. She's only one point behind, so she just needs a win, 
and possibly some help. And then Sharon Prenz, her Premier League is over. She will be playing for Pride in Week 9. So let's take a look at the fixtures. Well, good news for Dita Hedman. She is playing Kareen Hammond, so she actually will control her own destiny. Uh, Makuru Suzuki, Eileen DeGraff, uh, whoever wins that will be no worse than second going into Week 10. Lisa Ashton, Fallon, Sherrick, there's first versus four, so this actually would be the playoff if it started today, which it doesn't. Dita Hedman, Kareen Hammond is basically a play-in game, because if you look at the, uh, the table... Um, if Dita wins, she's in. If Kareen wins or draws, she's probably... Uh, no, she is definitely in. So Kareen would need a draw, Dita would need a win. Anastasia Dubrow-Maslova, Trina Gulliver. Again, that's basically a play-in game for Trina. If she gets a point, she's in. If she loses, she, she's in, she could be in trouble. And the last match, basically inconsequential. Lorraine Wynn Stanley is safe no matter what happens. She'll be playing for points, and Sharon Prince will be playing for pride. She is eliminated. So here we go. Judgment Night, Week 9. I'm super excited. I hope everybody else is. So here we go. First match, Mikuru Suzuki, Aline DeGraff. Certainly two of the three that have been the strongest so far in this competition. So let's get this started. And the winner is... Makuru Suzuki with another 80+. plus. I think that's her fourth or fifth one. I know she's had a 90 and at least three other 80s. So she's been really playing some solid darts. All right, so we'll stick that in there. Seven to two. Now we have Lisa Ashton, Fallon Sherrick, one versus four. And the winner is... Lee Sashton, despite playing well by her standards, quite poor. Uh, they both played quite poor, but points go to Miss Ashton. And there they go. All right, Dita Hedman, Kareen Hammond, just to recap. Well, there's the top four. That's not... Well, that could change, actually. Anastasia could... Uh, or Lorraine Winsdanley could also pass and move into four. So the, the first three are set, but here here's the key thing here. Kareen Hammond is in seventh, Dita Hedman is in ninth, and they could easily swap places based on what's happening here. So this is a critical match. If Dita Hedman loses, she is out. If she draws, she is out. She has to win. So let's put it in. And the winner is Dita Hedman, 82 and a half average. She brought it when she had to bring it. So that is a big, big win for her. And if we look at the league table, she is now safe. It just flipped. There it went. So she is now completely safe. She cannot be eliminated because uh, she is at six. And it will either be Trina Gulliver or Kareen Hammond. Now, with the leg difference, it's going to come down to uh, the points. Trina will need to get a point in this next match. If she can't get a point, she goes home. If she gets a point, then Kareen Hammond is eliminated. And lo and behold, it's the next match. So here we go. Anastasia Dobromislova. Trina Gulliver. So Trina needs a draw or a win to survive. And here it goes. Who is in? Is it Kareen Hammond or is it Trina Gulliver? It is going to be Trina Gulliver. She's she got the draw with a really great game. Look at that nine one eighties. Where is that? Three ton plus checkouts. Wow, that is worthy of a world champion. So we will put that in. I'll go ahead and flash the table after I put the last match in. The last match, all it's going to do is 
decide where Lorraine starts week 10. Sharon is already out. It's not a, not a massively important match except for Lorraine's playoffs. But Judgment Night has been decided. And Lorraine will happily take two points with her here at the end of Judgment Night. I'm sure she's very happy about that. She took care of business, and this is going to do something, so watch, what, watch where her name's about to go to. Tied for fourth now with Fallon Sherrick. So, let's recap. Where? Wait, why is... Why is Trina in night? That's not right. Is that thing right? Well, apparently Excel is being a pain in the ass. Um, why is it doing that? Um, I don't know. That's weird. I can understand it missing on the tiebreaker, but I don't understand how it can't line up the points. Let me put in Trina's score again. If I make it zero to zero, let's see what happens. It's still unhappy. Why does it... I don't know. You know what? I'm going to change that to a four. Still doesn't do it. Wow, that's weird. I don't know why it's not uh, working. Well, anyway, so... Um, i totally confused here. So I'm going to go ahead and... There. That solves the problem. Except it didn't, because it just reordered it, didn't it? Oh, oh, I know how to fix it. There we go. There. Good old hard wiring your spreadsheet because you know computers who needs them anyway so that's the correct table i promise you i have checked it anyway so now we can recap where we're at lisa ashton first with 16 points eight wins and a loss mccrew suzuki is undefeated six wins three draws and 15 points eileen de Graaf, 13 points played some really good darts six wins two losses and a draw we have a three-way tie with nine points between fallon sherrick lorraine win stanley and anastasia de bromislova dita hedman snuck in on judgment night with six points trina gulliver did the same getting that sixth point to survive the cut Kareen Hammond couldn't quite make it. She will be cut with only five points. And Sharon Prince only found two points, so she will also be eliminated. So, with that said, I hope you really enjoyed this video. I certainly enjoyed making it. It's a lot of fun to see what the ladies can do. And as you can see, they're very capable and more than uh, able to put up some big scores and play some good darts so i'll be really excited to see what these eight fantastic players will be able to do in the second half of the women's premier league so if you find this interesting please do like and subscribe i appreciate that very much and of course tune in to see what's going to happen in weeks 10 through 15 and then of course into the playoffs and see who we will crown the women's premier league champion i am looking forward to that I hope you all are too, so be sure to tune in and see what happens because it's going to be exciting, it's going to be fun, and it's going to be some great darts. So, till next time everybody, have a great day, and I hope to see you for the next part. So, see you guys.